In this video I will show you a really cool color grading trick to make your photos pop and make your subject more 3D to add even more depth to the photos. So let's do it. We will use this photo for our first example and I will show you two different ways how you can do the same thing. First method will be with adjustment layers, the second method will be with a camera raw filter which is equivalent if you want to do the same thing in a Lightroom. So choose whichever method you find easier and better for your needs. Okay, for the first method I want to create two groups. First will be for the background, the second one will be for, you guess, foreground. As you're already guessing, the idea is to make the separation between the model and the background in order to make the model pop out even more. And we can make that separation in brightness, in contrast, saturation and color. I will show you all of this. But first thing that we need to do is to make the selection of the model. And we can go like here, just select subject or go to any selection tool and select subject, whatever you want. If you have a newer version of Photoshop, you have this floating menu and Photoshop will do the great thing. Press Q on the keyboard to see the selection. And I immediately see that, let's use brush, that I can use this with the white color and just fix this a little bit. The selection doesn't need to be perfect. This is perfectly fine. Let's see this. Oh, I can do it. I can use maybe really soft brush and just, just do this. But trust me, this doesn't need to be like really, really perfect. This is okay. Press Q again and then just create a layer mask here in the background. Okay. And copy by holding Alt or Option key to the foreground. We want both have layer mask, but not the same. In the background, we need to invert it, Control or Command I and invert it because everything that is white will be affected, black will not be uh, affected at all, so background is this. Okay, so first, let's create separation in brightness. Let's make the background a little bit darker. And you can use any of these adjustment layers here in this group to do that. Let's start with the brightness and contrast. You can make it like that darker. Don't overdo it. We are doing subtle changes. We don't want to make like drastical changes. Obviously, we already made the separation between the model and the background, but we don't want that. We just want a little bit. And also in the same adjustment layer, we can lower the contrast. So to make the background a little bit washed out. Again, not too much. That's one way. Let me show you another way. If you use exposure, which I like to use, you can make the background darker. And with this, you can make the background washed out. So just a little bit. So this and this are really similar. Depends how you want to nail uh, the slider. So let's let's delete this one. This is my preference. You can do whatever you want, however you want. So like that. Then let's make the background a little bit more bluish. So for that, we can use color balance, for example, or curves. There are so many ways. And I like just to go with this a little bit to the left with blue obviously to the right towards the blue, then go to the highlights again, a little bit cyan, a little bit blue, just touch of it and also shadows, a little bit cyan, a little bit blue, and maybe it doesn't look much, but see before and after we already have really cool bluish background. Then I want to go with the hue and saturation and to reduce the saturation in background. So we can do this, but we don't want that just a little bit. We want background to be a little bit desaturated like that. And we already have brightness, contrast, saturation and color applied. Let's go to the foreground, do the same thing. You can use any of these, as I already said. So for example, let's let's use this time brightness and contrast. Why not? Let's do something different and make the model a little bit brighter, just a little bit, a little bit more contrast. Okay. Then we can apply one more curve and use this finger and select the shadows here. And with the keyboard arrows up twice, three times, just to make the shadows a little bit more brighter. Then let's go to, let's go to color balance because I like it. And let me show you, actually I show you the color balance. Let me show you curves. Let's go with the curves. And if you want to make her warmer, let's go to red and uh, you can, Go with the skin tone somewhere here and maybe let's see or maybe the foreground forehead not for forehead here it's, it's the same so just with the little bit up and then go with the blue again same thing somewhere here and a little bit da uh, down so to apply a little bit yellow ish instead of blue and we can go with the green the opposite of green is magenta 
and we can add a little bit magenta, so a little bit less green. So let's see, before and after you can see it is, it's a subtle difference, not huge. And also now we will apply Hue Saturation or Vibrance, let's go with Vibrance, a little bit Vibrance, a little bit Saturation, and here we have it. So this is really, these are really subtle difference here, subtle changes, but you can make, for example, her even more warm, the background even more cooler, whatever. And now if I go with Shift Control Alt T or Shift Command Option on a Mac, just to merge everything into one layer, let me show you before, this is the original, after, see, really nice pop in the colors and everything before and after. And this is non-destructive, you can always go in here and change the background, maybe you want less contrasty background, maybe you want even darker background, even brighter, whatever you want. What I like to do is to go to filter, camera filter and just add even more contrast overall, open the shadows a little bit and go right here and add vignette to the background, not too much, and feather it. So just a touch like that, and this is it. This is before, this is after, the subject is more in focus, it's more 3D, it's popped out, etc. Obviously you can apply dodge and burn to make it even more 3D, but that's not the point of this. And the point is just to do small color grading changes. Okay, so let's go to our second example and for this we will use this image and I will use only Adobe Camera or Lightroom Tweakings to make these adjustments here, but not only in Adobe Camera, which we can do, but we will make it our life easier here in Photoshop and make two copies of the same layer. This one will be BG, not BH, BG for background and this will be foreground. Okay, and I want to turn both of these into smart objects. So right click, convert to smart object. And let's go to first background and again make select subject option here. And this is pretty much okay, yeah. And just create a layer mask, do the same thing, copy it to the foreground and invert it, control command, I invert it to the background. So now I will go to filter, camera filter and here we can play with a few things. Let's make the image a little bit more blue. Let's make the image a little bit darker, less contrasty, but this is already almost flat image, so the contrast is not that much applied overall. We can go a little bit less with the contrast, with the texture and clarity, and a little bit less with saturation but there are not too much saturation here overall. So like that, if you press P on the keyboard, you will see before and after. We did a little bit of these adjustments, but already a lot of impact. If you want to do only in Lightroom, here you can go here to the masking, select subject and apply settings, select background, apply settings. In that way you can do in Lightroom everything with one layer, but I like to do in the two layers here. And we can go with a little bit of the vignette already here, feather it and press OK. You will see already there is really cool separation going on. This is before, this is after, already really cool. Let's go to the foreground, let's go to the filter and camera filter and we will do a little bit of the warm tone, maybe two for this photo, every photo is different. A little bit of the contrast, maybe even more. Brightness, we will see, it's already bright enough. Shadows, a little bit of the shadows. We can lower the highlights a little bit down, just to have more depth here. But this photo is already retouched, so it's not ideal example. If you have your own photos, took your own photos, especially in raw format, then this is amazing. I want a little bit of the texture and vibrance saturation a bit. We maybe didn't do much, but it's pretty nice difference. And uh, you can also add details and sharpen this a little bit, holding out, see what you want to sharpen if, if this is up, something that you want to do. And uh, let's see, maybe I just want a little bit more contrast here. I like it like that and press OK. And you will see immediately huge difference. Wow, this is before, this is after. Really big difference, really nice subject is already popped out and you can play with the eyes now, you can play with the lips, emphasize this a little bit, maybe add dodge and burn and make this even, even better, but that's not the point of this video. So this is before, 
this is after really nice separation between the subject and the background in your photo is more popped. Right guys, so this is it for today's video. If you like it, press the like button down below, consider subscribing if you're not already and also check my next video right here. See you next time. Bye bye.